what is happening, party people. I put this up for your viewing pleasure. Just some chalk whites and some deads from this year. Shoot me a comment on what you do with your dead heads and chalk antlers. I'd be curious to know. I think I'm going to build like a great big tree out of it. Like a, like a bone tree. Today, we're going to look at the Wolverine skull. Now this skull's been done for a couple of weeks. Man, what a special critter. Now the reason for me wearing all white is a reference to the color of the skull. So this skull has been whitened. It has started to color up in a few heavy bone areas, but I'm just using it as a reference. This is one beautiful little animal. I'm assuming he was a little out of line and got an attitude adjustment and broke this eye socket right here. But he's really cool. Let's watch the process. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't ever think this one would be a reality. I'm really, really, really excited about this critter. I'm a mess. I've cleaned, I've cleaned 20 Martins today. I don't know how many links. I'm redoing, everything's a mess. I'm glad you're here to share it with me. So check this out. I'm gonna have to give that a rinse. The Wolverine. Yeah, I, I had heard rumored that the skull might be broke. I think this is all busted. A good rule of thumb is if you ever see a skull with a bruising or blood or what looks like some sort of shock, take a picture of it and get a hold of your client. Make sure they're aware that there is some damage before you start cutting. You don't want to be held accountable for something that was out of your control. All right, moving forward, we're going to remove as much tissue as we can from this skull before we start boiling. I use a little bit of OxyClean here just because I have it and it creates a little bit of tack so I can grab a hold and cut that tissue free. Remove as much as you can. It's just gonna save you a bunch of time and energy in the boil. We typically don't talk skinning here, but I use the top of the head as a reference or a center point. If you figure from the ridge cap of that skull, right and left of it behind the eye socket, there's a big hunk of meat. And you always remove that part. Try and get in between the eyes and back to the back of the skull. That's just a big old hunk that needs to come off there. The next area that's super important to remove is the tongue. And I always like, if I can, to separate the jaw from the top of the head. So if you cut right and left of that V underneath the jaw, inside and outside, you can remove that tongue piece and then you want to hyper extend the jaw until it comes off. It's official. I don't ever, I don't ever want to fight a Wolverine. I have a pot over there with super warm peroxide. 50% water, 50% hydrogen peroxide. I'm just gonna drop this right in, as is. Eyes in it, the whole nine yards, just gonna drop it right in there and let it sit, because I have a gentleman coming over to drop some stuff off. I'm not gonna boil this, just dropping it in hot. Take a look. I dropped that Wolverine into that pot of what is warm, White Bone Creations mix. And you heard me say it's 50% water and 50% peroxide. That peroxide is 40% by volume. That's the strength. I let it sit in there for 30 minutes and pulled it out. Tell me that's not one creepy image. And then I'm gonna put it on the ground and I'm gonna power wash it clean using a little 1600 PSI electric washer. Make sure you're cleaning every single hole and every single orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. I 
thought you might enjoy this very real life interruption in the middle of a video. This old boy was going door to door looking for money for some drug rehab stuff. And uh, he walked right into a Wolverine skull cleaning video. Hello, Dr. Hack. Hi there. How's going there? Good, how are you? Good, you right to open this? Yeah, what you need? Um, hey, my, my name's Conrad. Come on in, come on Thanks, in. Uh, I didn't know that sound was a saw, so no. when you're, you're on your saw, you gotta be super careful of bugging someone. Power, power washing. Oh, cool. Uh -huh. Never seen a Wolverine? Uh-uh. Damn. That's cool. Where did you uh, get that at? Uh, this is a trapper in Alaska. Oh, cool. We had a nice educational conversation, and then we're back to skull washing. Man, I get tons of questions about the brain and brain removal. Here's how I do it, visually and verbally. I blow it out with the power washer, then I take a pair of forceps, I hook the liner, twist, and pull it out. Once I've got it 90% clean, I always throw it back in the peroxide and make sure that the peroxide chemical always touches bone. If it's not touching bone, it won't give us the color we're looking for. And then I just set it in the sun to dry, or you can set it in front of a fan to dry. Um, I don't want to get all into that. You can dry it however you want. This has been sitting for almost three weeks completely finished, and it's starting to color up in a few areas. I'm not going to put any mop and glue on this until I've given a full month of sitting. The reason for that is if I get some natural color that comes out of the bone, which is perfectly fine, I'm going to see how far I can take this with acetone. So I'm going to take, uh, just give it a month and let all that natural oil come out. I'm going to soak this down in acetone and see if it pulls it from an animal with extreme heavy bone. I've got martins that have been in acetone for a month. I've got lynx that have been in acetone for a month. Um, the next fill would be me pulling those critters out, checking the degreasing side of all that. And then tomorrow morning, I leave for a sheep hunt, so I hope I'll be able to share something cool with you on that side of the world. Man, I'm missing a hunt. So, hopefully all is well. Thank you, like always, for watching. I love you, and God bless.